The South African Council for Natural Scientific Professions celebrates 20 years of existence. Over the past two decades, the regulatory body's work has encompassed a wide range of scientific fields covering basic sciences and many of their applied derivatives. It has also provided regulation and advancement of natural sciences for socioeconomic benefit and growth. But to help us understand the achievements and what the Council stands for is CEO Dr. Nompu Mulele Oboko. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us and for your time this evening. Now, the need for valuable natural scientists is very important for any society, and especially one such as ours. What impactful role do natural scientists play in any society? Well, good evening, Katleho, and thank you very much for this opportunity to engage with you this evening. Yes, as SACNASPA, we, as you rightly said, we register and regulate the natural sciences in South Africa. So they play a very important role understanding, you know, what science, technology, and innovation can do or play, as especially addressing our socioeconomic challenges in the country. So this is where our scientists can come in and you know, looking at the work that they are doing, the knowledge that they've generated from the research, and we can use that therefore to look at solutions uh, and also to address our challenges in the country. Mm. So that is where we now call for increased in investment in research and development, but most importantly, capacity building so that we can achieve our desired outcomes. Most certainly, and we will discuss that a little later on as we as we talk, Doc. Just for us to to get a, an understanding of of SACNASP. I mean, you have a very significant role in ensuring that high ethics and prof professionalisation is instilled within the sector. What would you say are some of the highlights over the last 20 years? Yes, uh, the SACNASP, which is the South African Council for the Natural Scientific Profession was actually established in 2003 through an act of parliament, which we call the Natural Scientific Profession, Act Number 27 of 2003. And of course, that is really our mandate to register and regulate the natural sciences. But most importantly for us is really to contribute to the growth and to recognize uh, the profession itself. Hence, we've looked at the theme of how we've advanced professionalization scientific integrity and inclusivity over the past 20 years. So key achievements really have been, you know, looking at the numbers of registration. Currently in our database, we've got 17,000 registered scientists. And over the past 12 years, it has been a 30-fold increase from our black natural scientists, uh, which is really a commendable achievement. And more than that, some of these are young people at the ages of 20 to 39, because of some of the programs that we're having, going to the universities and engaging with them. These are young people who want to be professionals as well and also adhere to our code of conduct, ensuring that once they go into the sector, they start working, therefore they can you know, behave uh, as professionals, but also adhering to the code of conduct and delivering you know, high value services you know, to the public, to the employers and so forth, contributing really to our national development. Mm, most certainly. I mean, Doc, you make mention of a certain age group. What are some of the challenges that you face in ensuring that you are luring in a lot of the young school leavers within the sector of them becoming natural scientists? Yeah, I think this is very important, uh, understanding that we've got, you know, the pipeline. It really starts at the high school level where we need to engage and have very specific interventions to start igniting, you know, that uh, excitement for science, technology, and innovation, so that we prepare them to take on careers in the natural science uh, profession. But most importantly, we've got programs along the long life value chain where we are taking this young person. Now he's at the university. We are also having candidate mentorship program, and then those that are at advanced stage, then we introduce what we call continuous professional development because we want to ensure that they remain competent and we can track their progress uh, over time. So we've got very nice and uh, deliberate programs that ensure that the whole value chain is taken care of, even right going to the high schools to ensure that the young people at the, at the school level, now we've got most of them you know, writing the exams and we wish them all the best and we're looking forward to really you know, uh, inviting them to the SACNAS family 
once they go to the universities, we've got quite a number of programs for them. Mm. So we go also to the rural areas, understanding the challenges that they have in terms of accessing some of these resources. So it becomes important and a deliberate uh, activity for us to engage at those levels. Mm. And it's very important, Doc, for, for you to engage at those levels because, I mean, just over half of these graduates that you're mentioning are employed in the private sector and many of them are coming from very affluent universities that are within the urban areas. What do you think needs to change or what programs are you implementing in these previously disadvantaged universities who lack resources and who are more theory-based and we know that for a natural scientist there's a lot of more application that needs to go in hand. So what do you think really needs to be done or improved within these previously disadvantaged universities in order for us to see a higher intake of those students within the private sector? Now, that is a very important question. I think it needs a, a holistic approach. And I'm happy that as SACNAS, we've been really part and parcel of these engagements with various stakeholders, uh, you know, from the public sector, the private sector, where we are calling on all these stakeholders to say, let us have programs that really speaks to, you know, going to the rural areas and engaging our people. But more than that, have, you know, uh, you know, nearby laboratories, just to enhance uh, what they have there, understanding some of the resource disparities, even within the schools, within the provinces, so that they can also access uh, quality science educational materials. But also, as you said, you know, the laboratories are not there, and then they need to, you know, practice and understand what is it that they are doing and what are the outcomes at the end of the day as they prepare, you know, for the next journey going to the universities. Mm. So that is why then, we're collaborating with uh, government, other government departments, other in educational institutions, and uh, the private sector, importantly, so that we can have a more inclusive and a supporting environment for our young people to start exploring and embracing and, you know, having that likeness uh, to like science, because some they found it to be abstract, not understanding, because they cannot access some of these resources. As you said, it's theory-based, so we want to make it practical. So with the, with the Department of Science and Innovation, actually there is a National Science Week where we dedicate that an, an annual event to ensuring that we go to the schools, we work uh, getting our researchers, our scientists, availing their time you know, to go and engage with the communities, to engage with the young people at the school level so that they can understand what is the value and the contribution that they can make by taking, you know, careers in the sciences. Mm. Most importantly, I mean, speaking of that inclusivity, Doc, um, the, the industry is popularly known to be very male-dominated. So I can just imagine that having a female such as yourself who's a molecular biologist at the helm of such an institution is quite inspirational for having more women come into this industry. Yes, uh, very much so. I think it is important because... Uh, uh, the numbers really, they tell us there's still a lot of work that still needs to be done to achieve gender equity, especially in the natural sciences. But most importantly, as you've said, at the highest levels, you know, executive levels. So we need more women. And I think from our service partners, we've also come up with various interventions to ensure that we actively promote gender diversity and inclusivity within the pro profession. And we are fostering mentorship program I talked about the candidate mentorship program, also the continuous professional development so that we can support women as they progress in their careers. And we're also encouraging STEM education right from an early age to attract our young girls to science fields. And also another key important area is really to elevate and highlight and profile the achievements of women in South Africa who are playing a very important role in the sciences because they are the ones who are serving as role models and they can inspire our young people to take careers in the sciences. Because as you said, you know, people like myself, I'm coming from Mamelodi, which is a township here in South Africa. Our young people really need uh, role models like us, people that they can, uh, you know, look up to, but also see themselves also, you know, climbing the, the career ladder uh, in the near future. Most so we need more of our, our young people here to participate and uh, our women to also assist us in this journey. Doctor, thank you so much for your time and thank you for the efforts that you're making with your institution.